from today we have got festival nepal has festival it's dipavali and today is a special day for uh crow uh, in nepali we say kak tiyar and yeah and it, it goes for five days but uh, the special days for cow uh, we say lakshmi tiyar and um, bhai tika so there are five days especially three days and uh, tomorrow it's for crow tomorrow uh, no today is for crow tomorrow we have it for dog dog uh, uh, kukur tiyar so in this way there are five days for dipavali good um i guess uh, we can start um and mm -hmm. yeah uh yeah. so um everyone is here i think yeah um good enough we have like 13 attendees so good morning everyone um welcome to our open day in nepal uh let me greet you in a um, nepal greeting and i hope this is the right one uh namaste to everyone and hope you are all doing fine with this early in the morning so um, my name is andre zon from the marketing department of victorian Institute of technology and I will be your host for the day. So um, just a few housekeeping rules before we start. Um, questions will be entertained at the end of this presentation. Uh, if you can mute your microphone to keep the background noise. We have our um, chat button um, at the right hand position of your computer. So if you have any questions, you can write it down and we will be able to answer these after the session. If we cannot reply um, or endeavor to reply with your questions, uh, we, you can send us an email, which we will be sending you um, our VAT email address and we will be able to get, to get back to you. So now um, I would like to welcome all the future students of, uh, of VAT from Nepal and especially our um, agents and our VAT members and colleagues of VAT. Today, we're going to present to you our um, a VAT um, courses, students information and experience and um, our courses and pathway and, and about um, Australia as well. So um, let me start off by um, sharing you this uh, my screen. Let me give you a tour of our, our VAT campuses um, in Melbourne. We do have our um, Melbourne campus, we have um, Sydney campus and Adelaide campus. So in Melbourne, uh, we are located at uh, three buildings which are all, all in Queen Street. We have the 123 uh, Queen Street. We have the 118 Queen Street. We have um, 235 Queen Street. So these are all located in Melbourne. Meanwhile, we have our Sydney campus, which is also located at 333 Kent Street, and that's in Sydney. And the one that we have for um, Adelaide is uh, 14 Adam Street in March. And also, we would like to introduce to you as well um, with our VIP workshop for our carpentry, which is located at uh, 407 High Street, Lalor and our um, training um, kitchen facility at 413 Johnson Street at Tablets 4. So with that, let's go with the history of um, VIT. So VIT has been established in 1998 and it is a recognized RTO. It's a registered um, training organization which provides nationally recognized qualification and short courses in leading edge technologies of information technology, business management, and hospitality industry. VIT's mission is to provide students with high quality education and training. And our vision is to aim, um, VIT aims to create education network of excellence for life, long learning where people can go and achieve their, um, you know, their future dreams. So, um, VIT started in 1998 as an IT training um, consultancy and it attains the RTO um, status in 2000. So in 2004, uh, we diversify in training to um, hospitality, business and English. 
So in 2014, um, it attains the TEXA accreditation. So the history goes on uh, up to this time. So it's, you can say, you know, 22 years, VIT has a strong foundation. So um, these are the accreditation approval uh, of VAT, which is um, TEXA, and this is for higher education. ASQA is for um, vocational costs that we have, which is Australian Skilled Quality Authority. Let me um, show you a graph where we have our national diversity in terms of our higher education. So with our um, subcontinent um, percentage, it's 92%. So these are coming from Nepal, um, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and um, Pakistan. So 8% 8, 8 are uh, from Southeast Asia. So now uh, without further ado, I will be introducing to you our, our speaker uh, for the day. We have um, Alan Griffin, a uh, former minister and cabinet secretary in Australia. We have here uh, Professor Arun Patil, the Dean of Engagement and Partnership and Academic Dean of VIT. And we have here uh, Abdul Mamoun, he is our General Manager of Victoria Institute of um, Technology. Let's proceed with our program. So with our program today, uh, we're going to uh, tackle all these um, uh, topic, so why Australia and uh, COVID-19 responses of VIT, um, a student experience, courses and pathway internship, and VIT scholarships and fees. So let me hand over it to um, Alan to discuss about why studying Australia and our COVID responses. Over Thanks. to you, Alan. Thanks very much, Anne. Um, well, welcome everyone, and it's um, it's great to um, see that uh, people are looking to um, their future in a time when the entire world is wondering exactly what our future is. Um, that degree of uncertainty that's uh, gripping everyone uh, at the time of the pandemic um, does create a series of challenges that uh, uh, we all have to face, but uh, particularly people who are looking to study and to study overseas, it increases, I suppose, the sorts of um, uncertainty that you have and, um, and therefore the need to concentrate on considering the choices that that provides. But um, at a time when there are many variables, there are also opportunities. And, and I guess I'd say to all of you that that's something to consider uh, at a time like this. With the uncertainty we face, I think it's important to understand that the situation in any country is going to vary according to uh, a whole range of factors, both in terms of what's happening with respect to the pandemic itself. Uh, as we know at the moment, um, some parts of the world are dealing with uh, uh, second and third waves um, with significantly increased numbers. If you um, look at the um, US and the UK and Canada, that's certainly the case because we're going into winter in terms of the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, you're also seeing a situation where um, changes are made by governments, both in terms of the announcement of new policies around the question of, for example, um, visas um, and how they operate. And I'll talk a bit about that in the Australian context a little bit later on. Um, but also you'll see situations like in the US, you've just had a change of president. Uh, on one hand, that's probably good news with respect to um, students who might be looking to travel to the US to study because uh, uh, President-elect Biden uh, and the Democrats are likely to be more um, uh, sort of encouraging of um, students coming from overseas. But on the other side of that is the fact that it's um, almost certain that the Republicans have maintained control of the US Senate, um, which means that many of the measures that um, President Biden might seek to uh, actually have endorsed may not be able to pass their Congress. Um, so again, we then look, and I think it was mentioned earlier on about the issue of vaccines and the hope that um, that's not far away. Again, in recent days, we've had announcements about prospects with vaccines uh, going through um, uh, third stage trials, which are very encouraging. But I think we've also got to remember that even if, a, um, if the vaccine, which has currently been approved, um, is approved in line with a strict regulatory standard, which is what will be happening, the situation is that it's, uh, it's going to take 
a good, at least the first half of next year for that to be rolled out in a more general sense. Um, when uh, you look at the question about access in a whole range of countries, it's probably gonna take even longer than that. So with every advance, um, there isn't necessarily um, an answer. There's just probably some more questions. And where that's important in the context of making a choice about where you study is exactly this. Uh, what we know from the pandemic is frankly, if you don't control the virus, the virus will control you. Uh, and what we've seen is a situation where some countries who have looked to try and uh, open up their borders and um, actually keep their economies open on the basis that they want to avoid economic problems have actually had more severe economic problems than many of those who have taken a stricter approach. Uh, and that's important when you look at the question about what might happen down the track. So if I compare some of the countries um, that you'd be looking at with respect to potentially studying, uh, normally we'd be looking at say the US, um, the uh, UK and Canada. Uh, and I think there's a slide there, Anne. Anne, yep. Okay, so if you can see that slide there, I've just got figures from as of the 12th of November, which gives you a comparison with these countries with respect to what's been the coronavirus impact on each of those countries. And of course, the United States is leading the way in a very bad way in terms of uh, cases of nearly approaching 11 million, uh, deaths of nearly 250,000 um, and, um, and so on down. United Kingdom, um, over 1.2 million cases and over 50,000 deaths. Uh, Canada, well below that, but um, still, 277,000 cases and over 10,000 deaths. And then as you can see with Australia, uh, significantly lower again, um, with only just over 27,000 cases, less than 1,000 deaths. But I think what's really interesting is on the right-hand side, the cases per million, which gives you an idea about the level of infection in those countries. Um, and that goes to the figure per million in population of what the actual level of coronavirus infection is within those countries. And as you can see, that goes from as high as 32,000 plus per cases per million in the US um, down through to um, just over a thousand in Australia. The reason why I think that's really important is for a couple of things. One, the general issue of safety within each of those countries. Um, the bottom line is, um, that's something that anyone should be concerned about in terms of if they're looking to go to a, a country. But it's also important in the context of actually um, the likelihood of uh, their um, education systems returning to normal. Um, and also as well, the issue of around the question of economic recovery and therefore employment possibilities within those particular countries. Um, and I think what that points to is that uh, if your starting point is, where are we up to in the context of coronavirus, Australia is in a much better position than the other countries that we're looking at on this slide. And I think that's something that needs to be considered. If a vaccine becomes available soon, it will hopefully have an impact right across the world. But whatever impact it has, again, in Australia, we're starting from a better base position and that's likely to lead to better outcomes within Australia. And that's something I think people should really take into account um, with respect to their future. An issue which flows on from that, I guess, is um, for many students or many potential students is with borders closed, when can you actually come? Now, it's true to say that Australia is taking a very strict view with respect to um, coronavirus. And so the question will be is when can you come? Um, the odds are it will not be until later in 2021. Uh, possibly in the second semester, but quite often it's likely to be later in the year. Um, but again, if things go well in terms of vaccine, that could in fact move things forward a bit. Um, the other point, I guess, in terms of where we're up to in Australia at the moment is the Australian government has recognised the need to try and address um, the circumstances around international students and they've done that through what the, some changes they've made with respect to visas. Uh, one of the main points they've done there is that study that's undertaken online um, will be um, allowed um, once a visa has been granted, and that will also assist in qualifying for um, post-qualification work rights. So even though you might do one or even two semesters um, at home in Nepal before you come to Australia, that time will be taken as qualifying you with respect 
um, to post-qualification work rights. It provides you with an opportunity to actually move well down the path of gaining your Australian qualification while in a situation where you can save quite a bit of money in terms of fees and also in terms of living costs by undertaking that study while you're at home. One of the issues that often comes up in that space is the issue of online learning. Um, it's clear that many students prefer to be studying face to face and that's completely understandable. And in these circumstances, online learning, I'm afraid, has to be something that people consider. And certainly in coming to Australia, it's something that many students will need to do um, initially. The point I would make about that is that I think many people are suspicious of online learning because they're not used to it. But I can tell you now that there's been quite a bit of work done studying the impact of online learning already. And there was one study done by an organisation in Australia of some 7,000 students at um, um, uh, Education Centre of Australia. Uh, and what it showed when they surveyed those students in the, um, in the semester after they started with online learning, what they've discovered is something like a threefold increase in academic participation, um, in satisfaction levels, um, and all of that is, is suggested that interaction has also been improving. So many people who have actually started off with online learning and have been suspicious of it have actually embraced it. And I'd urge you to consider that very seriously. The other point I'd make in relation to that is that, as we know, Australia is now granting visas uh, from overseas. Um, and this provides also some opportunities. If you look at visa figures over the last few months, I can tell you that in August, only around just under 6,000 visas were granted from overseas um, for Australia, as against last year, where in the same period, it was something like 16,000. And then in July, it was 5,000 versus 25,000. And the point I'm making there is, because people aren't applying at the moment, because they don't think they can get to Australia, the bottom line is they're missing an opportunity. They're missing an opportunity for those applications to be considered. They're missing an opportunity for those applications to be granted, which then allows them to start their study now, start to actually achieve those academic outcomes, put themselves in a better position to be able to then come to Australia um, when the borders open and then be able to complete their qualification quicker. And frankly, from the point of view of cost at a cheaper rate. And in those circumstances, still qualify for um, post um, qualification work rights and therefore be in a situation where they can actually, as the economy will improve, be in a situation where they're able to take advantage of those employment opportunities. So although the numbers are, got, are down, it's in fact actually a good time therefore to apply. And that's something else I think people should consider. The broad question about why study in Australia beyond those opportunities, I think go to a range of things that we all, I mean, if you're on this, um, if you're involved in this um, seminar, you already know, you know, it's the third most, most popular study destination in the world and it's been growing. There is opportunity for students to work. And like I said, in a situation where the economy will start to improve here, probably to a greater extent than many other countries who are dealing with um, greater incidence of coronavirus, therefore there will be more opportunities for work, both while studying and also um, when in that post-study period. Uh, we've become a home for hundreds of thousands of international students and continue to be so even at this time. We have a very modern multicultural um, country with many um, people who have come from all over the world and we're a very um, uh, attractive destination for Nepalese students as we know both within BIT and in the broader Australian society. We have a very highly regulated education system and where that's important in the context of BIT is that Although we're not a public university, we're not the University of Melbourne, we're not the University of Monash, we have to meet education standards in a highly regulated environment, um, which are in line with the standards right across the board for other educational um, institutions. So when you receive study and um, assist assessment through VIT, it's the same levels of study and assessment that you're seeing at other institutions in Australia. So the quality is there, um, and others will speak more about that in detail, but that's part of what actually guarantees you a successful academic outcome um, through BIT. So a difficult time, a difficult time where you've got to make difficult choices, but it's a time where there are actually opportunities 
and those opportunities are there if you're prepared to consider them and if you're prepared to embrace them. And I would urge you to consider those questions very seriously. And I'd urge you to consider Australia and VIT as a location um, where you can have the opportunities that you deserve to be all that you can be. Thank you. Okay, and I'm finished. Yeah, thank you, Alan, for those wonderful information and informative data that you have shared to us with, with our agents and our um, students. Now, when we call on uh, Professor Arun to um, discuss about courses and pathway internship with DIT. Thank you very much, Anne, um, and welcome everybody. Uh, happy Diwali to all of you. Uh, I'm sure that you have, all of you must be in in, uh, in a celebration mode. Um, anyway. Um, uh, I will be uh, talking about um, the VIT's um, key features in terms of our programs, you know, our range of programs, diversity in our programs. Um, the detail of these programs, uh, you know, Mamun will definitely cover um, in, 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 uh, in detail in his session. However, I would like to tell you that we have a range um, of programs right from, uh, say, English language to, to master's level. Um, so I would say that uh, you know we cover broad range range of Australian qualification framework um, in, in, you know programs. Um, all our programs are highly recognized, okay, definitely, and and they are very popular. So we have English language, we have VET um, vocational education and training programs, you know, range of you know programs which are very attractive, and we also have higher education programs. Uh, in higher education, we have BITS Bachelor of Information Technology and Systems undergraduate program. And we have also Master of Information Technology and Systems, which is MITS uh, postgraduate, as well as we have MBA program. Okay, and we have different modes. You know the program. You know some of the pro of our programs are online also. But uh, if you are looking for onshore opportunity, face-to-face -face opportunity, yes, um, plenty of opportunity. As Alan and mentioned, even in spite of this challenging situation, you can start. You know, you know, um, anything which you choose um, uh, for for your uh, career life and, and you can start that program now. Now, why you should choose VIT? Because um, we have, um, as I said, we have diversity, definitely, um, but all our qualifications or programs, they're internationally recognized Australian qualification. Um, we have also flexible learning um, with, with uh, multiple intakes and, and Mamun will talk uh, more about that. Um, there is opportunity for you to enhance your skills. Um, and I, I would say the employability skills through um, projects, for example, Australian industry projects, and, and they are embedded, they are incorporated in our programs. I, I will talk more detail about uh, how they are embedded and what exactly gain uh, you will have uh, through these uh, specific programs. And we have continuous support. Um, the other key feature is um, we have involvement or engagement of industry experts or real world uh, experts who are internationally recognized in, in our programs, okay? Um, it is possible that some of them, they will come and interact with you via webinars, you know, for example, you know, uh, it, it, that is the, the arrangement. They may come face to face and they will interact with you, um, you know, if you, you are on one of our campus. Uh, and also uh, you may have access to, to, to talk to them, you know, in, in, in a more engaged and, and interactive way, okay? So that we have done. Um, and that's why our programs are, are, are unique programs. The most important thing, Alan mentioned about that in this current challenging situation, and, and Alan spoke about online learning. Um, and um, it, it, internationally, it has been uh, proved, uh, and, and Alan mentioned about some of the data, what it exactly is showing, but at VIT, what we are doing, um, and I would say that is again something which is very different uh, than than many other providers. That we have concept called engaged digital delivery, and through that engaged de de digital delivery, um, we definitely make sure that 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 experience of online learning should not be like a distance learning. Should not students should not feel like isolated. Students should not feel that they are completely disengaged or disconnected to, to their um, lecturers, to their facilitators, and even peers. However, 
we incorporated several uh, mechanism or several systems in our delivery so that it, it it is a more engaged digital delivery and it is not that we are saying this but we uh, we took survey and and every session we conducted during our semester we took survey at the end of that session every session every single session so in in suppose in a week if student is having uh, 15 lectures or 15 sessions all those 15 sessions we took feedback and we asked students how did it go what did you find in this 2 hour session or how how was uh, you know it it was challenging in 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 that 1 hour session and or what was the best in in this 1 hour session and and we collected that feedback we analyzed based on the you know if there was any improvement required if there was any feedback from students we continuously improved ourselves okay so our facilitators are so engaged with students and and they are really enjoying and most importantly our students are enjoying they're saying um, you know some of the qualitative feedback we collected and and students send email to our lecturers email to to course coordinators and and deans and they said that this is something amazing at vit there was no difference whether i was you know based in my my home and studying um, i did not feel any difference because it was more engaged learning and i enjoyed a lot uh, the whole semester i learned a lot it was amazing so that type of feedback we received so it is so so overall student satisfaction was extremely great because as you know it is very challenging and and we deal with technology and, and while we uh, decide or we think how curricula will be more interesting curricula will be more um, you know deliverable and and engaged uh, delivery should achieve we did that and that is why i i would say that all our programs they are unique in that sense because uh, even in this challenging situation uh, it is great and students are saying that it's nothing not much different you know to me because i learned whatever i could have learned in face to face mode as well okay now the other thing i would say that it is a, one of the thing and it is my portfolio as as a dean um, engagement and partnerships um, i also connect uh, industries with our our um, you know vit family and and we i i don't only connect that with our staff but it's more connections for students and we have structured internship programs okay we have uh, systematic uh, project um, which are driven by industry real world problems okay so we get problems from industries and we convert that problems into project and we ask our students or student teams in case uh, you know for example for undergraduate generally it happens in a team students work in a team for industry project in post graduate it, 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 the students work in a solo or or they work on, on themselves uh, it, and and they complete the project okay so in bachelor of information technology teams bits we have a uh, project a, in last two semesters semester 5 and semester 6 okay one is a project planning phase and another one is project implementation phase so they have to do project using uh, you know the two credits and they have opportunity students or if you join you will have opportunity to to engage with industry and work with real world problems now um, also the data we have collected again some data in very interesting in 2019 when we collected data of all our students from melbourne and sydney campus doing internships we found that in 2019 um, there were 86 percent of students who did internships they achieved overall grades in all subjects all units um, you know either a or b okay so that is you know that that highest highest high, high distinction or distinction so all those students they really engage themselves in industry uh, projects or internships and they did that successfully they also got good grades overall grades when they finished their program so they graduated with high flies you know they graduated with distinction and high distinction so that is something in 2020 that percentage we again calculated for both sydney and and, and, and melbourne campus that percentage was about 80 80 uh, 82 okay overall percentage all together so 80 two percentage of our total students of the class they achieved distinction and high distinction uh, in, in overall grades so and they were so happy they said that not only i we enjoyed our industry project or our internship but look 
overall grades our overall grades are so great that we don't need to worry about our you know job prospectors we are here academically we have strong we have demonstrated what we can do only you know and and if we knock any industry they will say that fantastic and you did the industry project very well now we we encourage many of our students to engage themselves and volunteer and come forward and and to do industry projects to do um, a project which had some challenges the project which has some real world uh, problems uh, and, and pro you know the pro and and you will have opportunity to to work with problem solving skills and and show, demonstrate that skills not only that our internships or industry projects are designed to give every student first hand discipline specific experience while working with with industry now when students do internships and industry project they kill two birds in one go so one is they are definitely getting credits for for that unit they are doing because that's a part of of the credit which is a part of the course uh, credit that's one thing and second thing they already get the knowledge uh, and and uh, about working in a real world real world or real world project and and they have clear understanding and exposure of oscillating industry so so they are ready to face you know the, the, the real challenges and and once they graduate they can show that yes i have i know how our oscillating industry works i know what can be problems i know how to 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 um solve those problems how to work in teams to solve that industry you know problem how to communicate with real world industry stakeholders okay and 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 um, uh, how to provide some sort of solution to to industries and and industry like that industry say that okay because you have experience you already know uh, even you did you know small part of project for um, you know in particular xyz industry um, you are well equipped and you are ready now i'm happy to hire you and some of our many of our students um they because they have shown that sort of commitment engagement their skills because they they show technical skills definitely they show problem solving skills definitely but but at the same time they show how they interact with the industry stakeholders because when they do industry projects they are working their industry supervisor are like senior you know production manager <clears throat> or somebody you know assistant manager okay Or, or someone who is is very senior senior engineer, for example, uh, quality manager, and and they observe our students, and 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 students get that confidence also. Okay. Most important in in Australia, uh, when you go for a job, you require sort of um, referee, okay, or reference. And many of our students, I always tell them, if you do good industry project, you have achieved something. Ask, request your industry supervisor that can I. <clears throat> Uh, you know nominate you as my referee for a, for for a job interview and industry people are very happy they said yeah because you have done a fantastic job i have great experience with you as a student i'm happy to be your referee and that adds to something to to makes easy for them to get a job because if when somebody from industry telling adana other industry that i know this student the student has done wonderful job i know his his or her communication and contribution what else you need okay that is you know the big tick for for you so i think um i i always encourage we always encourage we bring industry to to our campus also so you will have lots of opportunity if you are coming here on face face to face mode to interact with industry we have industry events we have industry nights where industry people come we have um, our student project exhibition where industry people come and they give feedback to you know students how good is that student you know students love that students say that my god you know this is senior manager from xyz industry having 30 years of experience and he is telling me or she is telling me you know about my project and giving me feedback i learned a lot okay so that is how we we provide lots of opportunity so through this we make sure that the student experience is always enhanced always better and Uh, alan mentioned about some surveys um, <clears throat> mamun will mention about uh, that but whether it is a national survey whether it is our own survey or feedback students are very happy because their experience is great and they say that that is why vit is very different vit stands out because when they compare because the students talk to each other you know the students talk you are in you know other provider 
or you are with this other college or you are with university how is your experience and they say that no this is fantastic i am being looked after we have you know we have student services whole student services team uh, you know right from academic support to counselor support you know we, so we have uh, if something is student has some personal issues we make sure that we will will take care of student we we look after you and our counselors will talk to you and and they will provide all sort of help you know as and when you need it so we we are ready and we are looking forward we have you know our own mechanism we have our systems in in place and we make sure that right from the enrollment to the graduation every stage students are you know being looked after very well and and they were always monitored and a support is provided you know wherever possible to the in in the best possible way okay so uh, we we are looking forward i'm looking forward to seeing you here thank you thank you professor arun for sharing those wonderful information um about our courses and pathway of uh, internship indeed with all the audience that we have now and participants with this program um everyone will be enrolling with pit thank you for that we may now call on um, Mamoon, Abdul Mamoon, who's going to discuss about BIT scholarship and fees. Over to you, Mamoon. Good afternoon. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Alan and Arun, for putting a lot of good and positive notes and what is happening at VIT. Um, hello, everyone. Um, uh, hello, Kapile Kostesa. I hope you are Tikso. Um, I have learned a little bit of um, Nepalese being traveling there a few times. Now, everyone, I will just cover um, some of the key things that we need to share with your, um, with our experience for our um, prospective students as well as the students. Um, let me share a presentation um, to go through this information. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'll just uh, first of all we'll talk about the courses that we offer. Um, I guess for Nepal um, that we have seen in the past few years. Um, so just going back to the topic that um, the students that we see from Nepal are more attracted to VIT's uh, undergraduate course, and of course uh, the Masters of IT is another the course that we see a lot of um, inquiries that we are also receiving, and recently that our MBA also. Um, we see a lot of um, you know, um, interaction and a lot of inquiries that we are receiving because we have got uh, many number of um, the specialization, the specialization that we offer. Now, uh, to start with the Bachelor of IT, um, it has um, uh, two specialization um, to start with. Um, and the specialization, what we offer with the networking and application development, uh, these are the very popular um, the specialization that are in very much in demand, especially uh, networking. Now, coming to our entry requirements for this um, the program for English is overall IELTS, you need a six overall, no less than five or equivalent. So that's the English requirements. And of course, the academics will be year 12. Now, coming to our Masters of IT, it has a 16th subject to actually fit for any discipline of the student want to do our Masters of IT course. Uh, now, if however, if student finish Bachelor of IT from their undergraduate course, we may be able to see the units, if they're matching with our foundation units for our Masters of IT, we'll be able to give them four subject career transfer towards our program. So it means the student will be able to finish their program with uh, finishing by 12 subjects with two years of uh, duration. Now, coming to the English requirements for Masters of IT, um, English requirements for Masters of IT is IELTS 6.5 overall, no less than six. That's the requirements for that. Um, I just need to go back and talk about the specialization that I missed out. Uh, for Masters of IT, we have three specialization, uh, starting with the software engineering, analytics, and architecture. We see um, because of the job demand, because of the peer pathway, we see many students are um, opting for um, software engineering that is um, that is actually very much in demand that we see in the recent past. Now, coming to our um, MBA, MBA, it, uh, we 
are offering with the four different specialization with the first one is the finance and accounting information system management and tourism and hospitality so that actually fits for most of the students uh, who are coming from various um, the background of the discipline um, to uh, do the master's uh, MBA program at VIT now coming to English requirements, it's um, IELTS 6.5, no less than six, that's the, uh, or equivalent, that's the English requirements. And as for academics, of course, um, we would require completed uh, five years, uh, sorry, uh, undergraduate program. Now, in the, in the talking about uh, our the GT guidelines. That's something um, we uh, give in a, this is a really a broader discussion. Um, I would suggest to contact your um, the agency to get a clear picture um, and you'll be able to uh, see uh, whether three years uh, gap or two years gap, marriage percentage and all the rest of it, you'll be able to get a clear picture once you contact our registered agency. So obviously, uh, if you go to our website, there's a list of agencies who are working at uh, the VIT by uh, the country, and you can um, contact them to get uh, details about our entry requirements in detail, as well as the GT guidelines. For example, your percentage, what we need, and, and, and the gap, and other related questions about our courses. I'm just going to draw the brief discussions, the initial discussions. Now, the main topic, uh, one talk about is the fees and scholarships and other um, the key information that I always try to share with international students um, for um, your um, the, at this time to, uh, to decide and do some uh, initial groundwork and um, do some research before you um, take a decision to study abroad. Now the screen that you see the the, we have, these are the programs that we offer. Um, yes, of course, we have many other programs in the vocational, but these are the programs that we offer for our offshore students, just to make sure there are visa possibility and um, more higher um, than applying for a vocational course. Now, what do you see in Bachelor of IT? is 8,500 fees per semester, uh, Masters of IT 12,000 and MBA, 12,000. That's actually our standard fees. That's um, the fees that per semester um, the student needs to pay. However, um, we are offering various uh, scholarships. Um, if you apply based on your academic uh, the merits or your academic standing, um, there is a committee. Uh, the VAT may be able to give you up to 100% um, scholarship, which means it could be if you do Bachelor of IT, uh, there will be a waiver of almost $51,000 from your tuition fees. Now, as I said, um, if we apply, you need to apply first to assess your academic standing, then we'll be able to tell what sort of uh, scholarship that we could offer. Now, for example, if I go to the next slide, it shows that um, the typical scholarship that we could offer. Um, but as I said, depending on your score, um, VIT is currently offering regional founders scholarships that could be up to um, 100%. But we have still um, the 25% scholarship that we offer for our Bachelor of IT students, 35% um, for Masters of IT students, and 50% for MBA students. Now, um, the one condition that we need to make sure the students, um, you need to apply the first thing and then we'll be able to assess your academic standing, then we'll be able to offer you these fees. Now, the, the, the right-hand side, it actually shows you the fees um, in your currency, if I'm talking about the Nepalese rupees per semester, this is what it will cost. Now, it's not only for first semester, uh, everyone, it, it will be for entire course. So you need to enter in the course, of course, in the first semester, by default, if you meet our entry requirements, if you meet GTE, then the first semester scholarships will be by default would be applicable. And the subsequent semester fees will you need to maintain by maintaining um, at least good academic progress throughout the course. So that's the, the very uh, simple uh, way to maintain your scholarships at VIT. I guess um, I just wanted to now go and talk a bit in a border, expect about a bit of you know, comparison with the Australian and other countries, um, the, the living expenses and as well as your fees, if you, you, know, if you say. Now, if I talk about um, United Kingdom, 
um, this is one of the preferred destination other than Australia. We see many students are uh, probably opting to go to UK or USA or Canada. So I'm just giving a rough um, idea about the expenses comparing with the other preferred destination around the world. So what is, uh, if you look at the United Kingdom, the average per month rent is 850 to 1000 per month and trans transportation would cost you on an average $77 a month, where USA is 1400 um, and uh, transportation 225. The rent is 659 in Canada and transportation 96. And compared to Australia, I see that within the other countries that you see on the left hand side, we are very, very competitive in the sense of your living cost and your transportation cost. What that shows is if you talk about your, your uh, the, uh, the fees and the living cost in the other countries, you need to also consider your earning or the capacity to work. Australia offers 40 hours a fortnight. Uh, you, as an international student, and you know, all other country has got some sort of limitation and the earning is not as easy as in Australia. And after the postgraduate or when you get graduated, you have 485 visa option where you could get more than two years of uh, work rights. So that is something a significant, um, you know, uh, topic or thinking that you need to think through before you decide your uh, destination. As Ellen mentioned, the, if you talk about our current situation compared to the other country, our health system really managed well in terms of the COVID, which means the economy will come back very soon, which means the jobs and opportunity will be uh, the fastest that any other country that we see if we compare the other preferred destination that are we compare, uh, like you know, UK, Canada, and USA. So. Other thing I just wanted to always um, um, talk about the students. When um, student comes to Australia, um, the, of course, there are thousands of agencies out there, but also what we do, we get excited in the initial stage. Oh, you know what? You know some of the university, you know some of the, um, the providers, they are out there and you get fascinated by their name brand and looking at the images as a nice big facility where you have swimming pool, nice lake and you know, um, gym and all that. So student gets fascinated. I just wanted to give it just a rough um, and the obstacle students that face when they come to Australia or before they come to Australia, what are the things that they need to actually consider before they decide to go uh, abroad to study and, and, and spend their money and graduate and, and achieve their career goal. So a student gets anticipation, anticipation is very high to come to a, a, in a public university or good university. Um, and at that time, they see the fees, it looks reasonable. Um, it could be 10,000 or $12,000. But what happens is students, when they physically come to uh, Australia, the first thing they actually struggle to settle in is because of their homesickness, is because of their um, the settling in to get a, a rent, accommodation, job, transportation, and the culture about the teaching uh, way uh, of the method that we provide in Australia. Because you come from a different culture to a diff another different culture that actually, actually it's really quite hard for students to actually understand and settle. And then what happens, this gives the students actually they lose an opportunity over time in terms of the cost and in terms of the time and, and, and money as well. We've seen um, that majority of the students when they come to the Australia, the first semester they tend to fail um, more than 50% of the subject, which means if you do four subjects, you fail more. So um, that actually end up students, of course, the duration of the first semester when you come to Australia, you, of course, your time, you put your time and of course you have to pay your rent, food, transportation. And I have looked at the overall, the cost and the fees. It's on an average a student actually spend about $15,000 in the first semester. And then what happens, students tend to change after that because they see there's another provider out there, which is a very competitive fees. And once they decide to change, the subjects they you know, initially studied, obviously they're not gonna get credit when they change over. So obviously they have to repeat those subjects and the time they have to put in again. So the reason for I'm 
discussing about these obstacles is because before you decide, before you go to your right um, uh, institutions, you need to have a think through that the cost it will uh, take to complete your degree. Do not come here and change your mind after six months. And this is what you will end up um, you know, losing in Nepalese rupees. I think it's $1.3 uh, million, which is, is a lot of money for you uh, to put in. So uh, yeah, I have shown you the fees, what we have. I think the fees, uh, the way what we are offering for uh, Nepalese students, uh, the significant amount of scholarships to just to students to encourage uh, to start the course. I know there is a pandemic, there's a travel restriction, there is a lot of other things that you are that actually stopping you to think through or apply. But we are giving this such a this, uh, scholarships to engage you, to encourage you, because you can save a significant amount of money if you start your course now through online, as um, Arun mentioned, our digital learning. See, you see, if you study in a face-to-face -face environment, you have less um, option or you feel a bit shy to raise your hand, you ask your question, you might think that you're around you, you might, your friend might say, oh, you is a bit silly to ask that questions. But if you see, if the digital learning is a different environment. It nobody sees you and you can ask any questions. It, it, it is very en engaging. So online learning is a better way to get to your um, uh, start your degree you were in the, you'll be in the first in a place to start your course um, as because the border will be opening soon but don't forget when the border opens there will be some stages this uh, the, the government will give the opportunity to the first in first students who are starting there will be the first opportunity to come to australia not those who are waiting to apply for the visa at the last minute when the border opens. So you need to take an advantage of your this opportunity. You will save money. Um, distance learning could save your living cost. Distance learning could be put you in a position that you will be first in the camp in a queue to come to Australia when border opens distance learning or online learning will give you opportunity to save money. And of course, you're not losing anything you're learning. The students who are in Australia, they're also learning. They're also taking online classes. So I don't think you're losing anything in my view. Um, I'm just going to be very quick. I know there's a worry at the time. I'll just have a, a, a give you a quick video um, about uh, our uh, the testimony about the students who are studying or you know graduated from BIT, and then some students are from Nepal. Uh, I'll just uh, quickly share this video and then I'll finish off. Uh, let me share this video and play that. My name is Chisette. I am originally from the Philippines. I am currently enrolled in BIT in Masters in Information Technology. Australia is very open to uh, international students very diverse culture. It's known globally to be one of those countries who provide uh, international students with high standards of learning. My name is Kusal Pore. I'm from Nepal. I choose VIT because the program they are offering is what I'm looking for. They are repeated not only for uh, classroom type of teaching, they do practical applications, they do trainings. I'm Santos. I'm originally from Nepal. I'm a recent ID graduate streaming in networking. My agent a great international academic uh, mentioned VIT about its flexible schedule and the uh, tuition fees were affordable. So I would really recommend VIT for those students who are looking for tuition fees to be affordable while studying. Uh, my name is Simon Tap. I'm going from Myanmar, uh, the city of the Yango, and I'm currently doing the Master of Information Technology in VIT, specialized in software engineering. The reason I choose VIT is because VIT is very close to the public transfer and really located in the center of the city. And then they also offer me the scholarship as a bonus and that helped me a lot for my financial support. I found uh VIT to be uh, very supportive to their student. The staff are very friendly. Also, at the same time, the facilities that they have are very well satisfied. They have laboratories, libraries. Well, what I'm really impressed by VIT is the student information system, which is really assisting all the students in a daily basis. We use an online learning management system where students retrieve all their notes from, so all lecture notes are put online. Students have access to these 24 hours a day. Uh, all student assignments and assessment are submitted online. Most of our students love studying here. We, we have a very dedicated staff. 
Uh, we have lots of young, enthusiastic lecturers uh, at the forefront uh, of technology. Now we have been operating for about 20 years and for those 20 years we have been um, uh, training and teaching uh, many corporate clients as well as individuals. We offer not only uh, courses uh, at a theoretical level but we also offer uh, internships and we offer projects to build the students up to start learning how to research, how to uh, do a number of things that they would normally do in the business world as IT professionals. There's definitely a purpose why I wanted to study and pursue higher education. So I know VIT would be able to help me out with that. As early as now, I can say that the education that is being provided to us is very uh, competitive and would really help me out all through this two-year time uh, that I'm here. And I can bring that and uh, contribute a lot in my future and the work. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Anne, um, for uh, listening. I think I took a bit longer time that, than uh, what I have allocated. Um, so over to you, Anne, uh, for Q&A. Yes, uh, thank you, Mamoun. Uh, before we go and push through with the Q&A, uh, we have one testimonial from uh, a current student. Um, may I call on Sandesh? Um, are you there, Sandesh? Hi, Sandesh, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you, yep. Hello everyone, namaste. My name is Sandesh and I'm originally from Nepal. I'm the current student here in VIT and I'm studying Bachelor of Information Technology and I'm running in my fourth semester now. From this virtual season, I'd just like to share some of my experience so far with Victorian Institute of Technology. When I was in Nepal, I've made a lot of researches about various universities, colleges, and lots of other providers to study my chosen course. Because being an international student, I understand that studying overseas is the biggest decision itself. So upon considering the factors such as cost, quality education, flexible location, and reasonable price, I finally chose to study in VIT. And until now, I'm very happy about my decision. So, I like to share some of my experience which I felt studying in VIT. I've always received proper guidance from my tutors and especially the student services whenever required. The tutors here in VIT, the, most of them are from industry. So here in VIT, we'll not only get the book piece knowledge, but we'll also be focused on the practical learning. And what I have felt is those practical learning helps us a lot in future to get into the workforce. Right now, when we have been doing the online classes, what I've realized is this online classes is even more effective than the face-to-face -face classes. As Mr. Mamun told earlier, I'm also one of the students who was a bit shy and you know who feel a bit hesitant to ask the question in the class. But here in online learning, what we can do is we can simply you know put our question through the chat, raise our hands, and we can just simply email the lecturers, and the reply is too quick. After every session, we get a feedback session where we can say like what we like about the session, what we don't like about the session, and you know, lots of it. And most importantly, there are these students from lots of nationalities from where we can get to learn a lot. We have this, I have the classmates from Sri Lanka, some of them are from Philippines, and most of them are from Nepal, some of them are from India. And you know, it's a multicultural environment and it feels like a home you know you will never feel like the homesick or something like that because once you enter to the vit family then you'll be always be supported apart from the academic support there are lots of other support what i have felt is especially the student support facility here in vit it's too big here recently in the pandemic time i've been getting lots of call every week they're asking me about my mental health my personal problem even if it's not their concern, they're asking me just to check if I'm okay with everything, if I'm okay with my learning, if I'm okay with my lecturers, if I'm okay with my assignments and many things. And just to let you know, during this pandemic period, when it was hard for me to collect my tuition fee, and of course the case is similar with lots of other students, they asked me like if I need any support and like I express my problem, okay, this is my problem, I'm not being able to, you know, like arrange all the fees and not being able to get the money from my home country too because the banks were closed. And I received this scholarship 
equivalent to the Nepalese rupees, almost 80 to 90,000. And it's not only me, there are like lots of our Nepalese friends who have been receiving this scholarship and being able to maintain their enrollment in Victoria Institute. Because I have seen like the students from lots of biggest universities, like they have changed their like provider, they, some of them are staying without, you know, enrolling in their course, because there is no option for them. They can't pay their fees. And the sad part is they have, there is no one to look after them, to listen to them. Because, but here in VIT, it's like the, the classrooms are large and, but the students they put is like the limited number so that they, everyone can interact and they can reach out to their lecturers and the student support facility they are always there for the student whenever you have any kind of problem maybe it may be an academic it may be you know the problem with your assignments it may be like any kind of problem there is always someone whom you can talk with so that is something i like about the vit and apart from that, I think the fee structure of the VIT is very, very, very reasonable compared to the service they provide. Uh, compared to the quality education, the experience tutors and all other service they provide, the fee structure they have, I feel that is very reasonable compared to other universities and other providers. And to move on, what I have felt is the VIT mostly, there are lots of Nepalese students and the teaching method of the VIT is not only limited to the book is knowledge. So we can have lots of our Nepalese friend and somehow the, the learning is somehow like it's relatable with our home country so that, you know, we don't feel like we are completely in the new old or new environment and we don't feel any academic difficulties. Like I have lots of friends who are happily continuing their study. They are passing with the good grace. And some of my seniors who are from Nepal, they have already graduated and some of them are like having a good job in their IT industry and many other industry related to the information and technology area. So what I think is if you are like looking further to study overseas, especially if you are looking for the career in the information and technology and you are worried about your choice, you know, like as I mentioned earlier, like studying overseas is the biggest decision itself. I can ensure that VIT is definitely the good option compared to the like if you look into the factors of the education quality, experienced tutors, tutors from the industry itself, so that they have got the experience and they can tell their student like what you need to be prepared of to get into the industry, like what kind of interview will be there in future when you want to get into the industry or something like that. And even the fee structure is low. So I think that if you are looking for the career in the IT and if you want to study overseas, then VIT is definitely the good option. That was a um, heartwarming um, speech from you, Sundes, and we're happy to hear that. Um, and thank you for sharing that one to everyone. Now, um, let's proceed with our um, q and I know we're running out of time, so we'll browse some questions. Um, so there's a question from Sa Sajis, uh, Rajesh, um, when will the border be open and what is the status of the international students coming to Australia. So I think um, Alan has um, discussed about this a while ago. Would you like to add more, Alan? I'll just be very brief, thanks. I think we are running out of time and I think we're gonna have to sort of um, yeah. get quicker on the questions and the answers. Um, we don't know yet, that's the truth of it. The expectation is it'll be during next year and, and we hope sooner rather than later, but that will depend on the government and we have no control over what the government does. The government will be looking at how things are going with the pandemic um, and where things are up to with things like vaccines. Uh, they, are, they are certainly working on the basis of last year rather than earlier. Uh, the point with what we've been trying to outline today is there's an opportunity to be able to start online, get your visa and actually commence your study so that whenever the border is open, you'll be able to come. Now, the other one I'll just pick up on very quickly. There was mentioned, uh, one other question was there was regarding, do we offer quarantine facilities for students who arrive? Uh, we don't. However, uh, when students are able to arrive, the expectation is that there will be a range of things put in place, often through the government, but also through institutions to provide uh, quarantine support for when people are able to come. But that will be an issue for closer to that time um, we'll certainly be looking to try and ensure that our um, students have access to those sorts of facilities. But at this stage, it's just way too early to be able to actually be clear about what that will be. 
but there's no doubt that it won't work without those facilities being available. And therefore, I'm very confident that they will be available when they're actually needed. Okay, thank you for that. Um, another question from Ruben. Um, my parents are worried considering that Australia is the best destination now. So what support we can get from V8 in case we get sick, there's some mental health issues and some other health issues? Um, I'll just take that for a start. I mean, although Aaron might want to add, I mean, we provide counselling services and that to actually deal with the needs of our students. Um, that provides us with an opportunity to as assess your needs and to ensure that you're given advice about available facilities. But also remember, as a student who is an international student in Australia, you are required um, in order to be able to enter to Australia to actually have health insurance which provides you with access to doctors, access to hospitals, and access to most of the services that you might need. And you are required to have that insurance in order to ensure that those services are available to you um, before you arrive in Australia. And you are required to have that insurance throughout your time in Australia. Yeah. Um, yeah. Question from Arjun. Um, could you please let me know about the days um probably classes days in VIT. So that that I can check the, it, it, you know, the each individual <clears throat> program <clears throat> a timetable and semester timetable is different. So it depends on which semester you're doing and, and uh, which course or which, which program you are doing and what level. Uh, <clears throat> but I think I would say that, you know, we have teaching and learning and activities almost, um, you know, um, ranging from Monday to Saturday, but scattered, okay? Um, having said that, students still have enough time for if, you know, for preparation, for submission, for academic study, uh, for recreation even, uh, for sports, um, and, and, and anything, you know, they fi find interest and also part-time jobs. But, but, you know, you have to follow the standard, you know, visa regulations, guidelines for international students, of course, and, and you have to uh, for one thing I would like to advise you, if you are really thinking to come to Australia, you know, when it border opens and so on, you need to uh, work on, you know, your study, work, and and life balance. So the three important thing: study, which should have a priority definitely. Um, then comes to you know to be part-time job or part-time work for to support yourselves if required, uh, and and then comes you know the the the, the life uh, whether you have <coughs> recreation. <clears throat> some hobbies, sports, and there are so many opportunities in Australia for that. Okay, so you need to decide, but timetable is scattered and there is opportunity for every student can accommodate everything um, and, and provide, um, you know, priority to study. Thank you. Um, another question from Suzanne. Um, this probably, she was probably pertaining to March intake. What as percentage of scholarship will student get for a Bachelor of Information Technology? Um, was it for March or July, you say? It, it says in here July. So yes, I would assume we... that it would be July 20, yeah. 20, uh, the 21. 20, 21 uh, I just yeah. wanted to take that uh, because look, um, at the moment we have offerings that we have shown um, in the screen earlier that um, we have uh, the scholarships. Just let's uh, still we have that uh, page. We, we, we are giving up to 100%, um, everyone, but it all um, it depends on your academic standing, your um, the, the percentage of your course progress, and also um, it depends on the GTE that we need to see when you lodge your visa. But it's, it's ranging from 25%, we have 35%, 50%, and up to 100% that we offer only for March intake. The reason that we are uh, the capturing this, we are encouraging a student to start um, immediately, to start in online. So you'll be in the first in a queue to come to Australia. You're not losing as anything. Just in case you, let's say you have applied for March intake and your application on the process to get the visa, just in case your visa unfortunately get rejected, VIT will give you full refund of your tuition fee, what you have paid for the first semester. Now, 
in not losing anything, only it could be a $200 of enrollment fee that could be deducted, um, but the full fees will be refunded to your account. So you're not losing anything. Of course, if you show to the department that you're studying, you're not um, making any gap, um, it will of, of course show you that you are a genuine student. It will give you a positive uh, vibe for your case officer to, to pick and say, oh, you know what, this student's already studying. So that's a good thing for you to actually show that you're not wasting your time you are a genuine student you have already started the course so that something and evidence that you can show to the case officer but i personally think july is is too early to say at this stage what will be the fees and scholarships so um, i personally recommend you to do not lose that opportunity to apply now vit will give you option to do uh, enroll into two subjects and you can do two subjects in the july intake and you can pay one semester fee that means you're covering one semester fees over one year so you have to not have to worry about how you're going to cope up with this uh, semester Mr. Fees for the next one, at least you have uh, a less load, less money for the first semester, opportunity to get the visa more, more scholarships, you're not losing anything. That's from my end. Yeah, um, probably there will be a last question or if we have some more, I uh, will be able to answer them. This is from Satish, in case we do um, remote learning, what are the maximum units we can enroll? Um, I just covered that too. Um, now, um, you can go up to four subjects, but you can also uh, do minimum of two units uh, from the March intake, but no less than two. Um, from Rabindra, um, what are the academic requirements for the 100% scholarship? I think it was... <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like to add some more information. Um, yeah. uh, yes, of course, uh, happy to take that. Um, look, 100%, as I said, uh, we will be looking at, this is a founders, uh, regional, uh, very generous scholarships. Um, at Shandesh, one of our students mentioned that VIT has given during this pandemic um, um, over a million dollars to almost 1,100 VIT students to reduce their fees by giving scholarships. And as for this upcoming intake, um, the VIT's, uh, uh, the CEO, the founder, uh, would consider a student academic score. For example, we have got 500 applications from Nepal, and we will uh, see who is the highest scoring student, and we'll have a committee, and committee will decide uh, who will be the actually top scorer, possibly the top scorer will get that uh, 100%, and followed by the other scholarship that I mentioned, 25%, 35%, and, and 50%, is available for other students. So we uh, need to see the application. So you need to apply and then we'll be able to get back and confirm that. Thank you. Yes, just uh, Mamu, would you like to address this again? I got a 15% scholarship from my offer and I'm applying for March. So would I get the 25%? Very tricky question. Um, I'm not sure which intake you have enrolled and got your offer. Um, if we already already comments, I think there will be no chance to change it back or uh, make it 15% uh, to 25%. Um, uh, I, I would uh, ask Mr. Bishal to send an email to um, enroll at vit.edu.au or contact your agency to contact us to see uh, what stage you are in. If you're in offer stage, there is a, could be a possibility that you may be able to get um, the more uh, scholarship that's are offering for March intake. But if your intake already passed or you have commenced, there is a less possibility that we'll be able to change that, unfortunately. I think um, there won't be any questions um, on our chat box and we're running out of time. So I hope um, everyone has learned and gathered information about VIT and its courses. And we hope to see everyone in Australia. So thank you for your time, um, Nepali. And you can reach us at, from our website, it's, which is www.vat.edu.au. And from our social um, media page, which we have a Facebook, um, Instagram, TikTok. And for more information, uh, you can send us an email at enrolled at vit.edu.au. Thank you for coming, everyone.